we have an individual, a person, made up of their mind, their emotions, and their behavior. The cognitive is what we did on Monday. The wheel of strengths, the mind. That is an awareness of your wheel of strengths. That's cognitive. That's called neshama. Here, today we're going to do the emotional part. How your heart feels good about yourself. And Monday, we're going to do the behavioral, how you act with self-esteem, how you act with confidence, how you act with resilience and inner strength. Thinking, feeling, doing. This is a whole human being. And the Shari Kedusha, Rav Chaim Vital from the Arizal says, this is who we are. We are mind, heart, actions. All three must be aligned in order for us to have self-esteem. We've talked about the mind. That's why I gave you the homework, to be a reminder of your strengths, what you're proud of. Now we're going to do into the emotional part with a Jewish meditation. I want everyone to put down anything else you're doing. Put your both legs on the floor, both feet on the floor. Sit up straight. In order for us to get the heart, the emotional self, to be aligned with our mind, our mind and our heart are now going to be placed into alignment where our feelings are going to catch up with you what you know. You know that you're good based on the will of strengths, but sometimes I still feel not so good. Right? I know it intellectually, but sometimes we don't feel so confident when we walk into a room. What are they going to say about me? What are they thinking about me when I leave the room? Do they like me? Do they not like me? Let's resolve that right now. Everyone breathe in for five seconds. Hold it. Now breathe out for five seconds. When you breathe in, I want you to tense up your back and neck. Hold it. Breathe out and relax the muscles of your neck and back. Breathe in, tense up your shoulders. Breathe out and relax the muscles of your shoulders. Tense up your arms. Breathe out and relax your arms. Breathe in and tense up your jaw. Hold it. Breathe out and relax the muscles of your jaw. When you breathe in, you breathe in through your nose like this. Fill up your lungs. And when you breathe out, you relax by breathing out like this. Press your lips and breathe out the air. So on the out breath, on the exhale, that's when you relax the muscles. Breathe in and tense up the muscles like this. Breathe out and relax them. Breathe in and let's tense up our cheeks like this. Breathe out and relax your cheeks. Breathe in and tense up your eyes. Breathe out and relax your eyes. Breathe in and tense up your mind like this. Breathe out and relax your mind like this. <coughs> Breathe in and scrunch up your thoughts like this. <laughs> Breathe out and relax your mind. Liberate your mind. Breathe in now and look inside your mind at the negative thoughts in your mind. Breathe in and go like this. Think of the negative thoughts. Breathe out and release the negative thoughts. Let them stream out of your mind. Look inside your mind now and look at all the worries and swirling thoughts about 
Do they like me? Do they not like me? Am I doing well in seminary? Not well in seminary? Do I miss my parents? Do my parents miss me? Do my siblings miss me? What am I going to do when I get back? What seminar school am I going to go to? What grades am I getting? Am I doing well? Right? Does my roommate like me? All those worry thoughts. Breathe in and look at those thoughts in your mind. Look inside. Open a flap over here and let those thoughts stream out. Open the flap and let them stream out of your mind. Empty your mind of worry because you're holding on to the worry with your thinking. What are you worried about? Where is the worry? Here. Let it go. I want you to stop thinking and start being. Breathe in again. Look at your thoughts. Think of the thoughts that are worrying you, that are bothering you. Everyone has one main thought that's bothering you. Think of that one main thing that's bothering you. Breathe out and let it stream out of your mind. Let it go. Let it go. Empty your mind of thinking and put yourself in a state of being. Being means, imagine you're standing under the blue sky here in Jerusalem without any thoughts. Just enter into a state of gratitude. I'm glad to be. That's being. Breathe in. Imagine a blue sky. Imagine your trip, your teal to the Galil, looking at the mountains, waterfall, just relax. Imagine it and just accept it. Have gratitude for it. Just be. No thoughts, just being. Everyone go there, breathe in. Now, as you are in this state of being, I want you to enter into a garden of blue flowers. Pretend that you're entering into a garden of blue flowers. There are 100,000 blue flowers. Dark blue, light blue, royal blue, navy blue. There's a meadow of flowers, a valley of flowers, a mountain of flowers, 100,000 blue flowers, and you're walking through this garden of blue flowers. Imagine you're surrounded by blue. Blue sky, blue flowers. Breathe in. Receive blue. Smell the flowers. Breathe in and smell them. They smell of winter fresh. Relaxing. Tranquility, serenity. Open a gate in this blue garden and enter into a garden of yellow flowers. 100,000 yellow flowers. Daffodils. Tulips. Hummingbirds with yellow wings. Lemon trees with ripe yellow lemons. A meadow of yellow. A valley of yellow. Mountain filled with yellow flowers. Stroll amongst the flowers. Touch them. See them. Smell them. Go over to a lemon tree and smell the lemons. Breathe in. Smell them. You can almost taste them. Open a gate in this yellow garden and enter into a garden of purple flowers. Dark purple, violet, mauve, light purple. A meadow of 100,000 purple flowers. In the meadow, in the valley, on the mountain. Stroll amongst the flowers. Enjoy them. Breathe in. Breathe in the flowers. They smell of lilacs. Smell the lilacs. Leave this garden, enter into a wheat field. The wheat field is full of golden ripe wheat. On the right and left, there's a pathway of three feet along the, in the wheat field. Over your head, there's a canopy of 10 foot wheat. Each stalk is 10 feet high. Covering your head like a chuppah, canopy. You're walking along the pathway. You're protected, you feel safe. Smell the wheat. As you walk along this 1,000 foot pathway in the middle of this wheat field, smell the wheat. It smells of fresh bread. Smell the wheat. 
You're coming to the end of the pathway, you come outside, and now you are in the most beautiful place you have been to in your life. This is your favorite place. You've been to this place. I want you to think about being in this most beautiful place you've been to in your life. It's your favorite place in the world. Most expansive, most uplifting, most inspiring place that you've been to. Go there in your mind. Play a video of it in your mind. Experience it. Breathe in, be there. Look at the colors. Smell the air. Feel the warmth of the sun. Look at the beauty of this place. Hear the sounds. Smell the scents of this place. Tell me where you are and tell me how you feel in this place. Where are you? Who can volunteer and tell me where you are, what's your favorite place, and how you feel in that place? Where are you? Um, in a meadow looking at the night sky. A meadow where? Looking at the night sky. Meadow looking at the night sky. How do you feel? Go there in the meadow, look at the night sky, the stars. How do you feel there? Inspired. Inspired. Beautiful. You are Rivka. Who else? Tell me where you are. Where's your favorite place? The reason why you like that place, Rivka, is because it represents you. You're seeing your own self in that place. It is a metaphysical mirror of you. Alone in a meadow means individuality, uniqueness, protected by the uniqueness of the stars. You yourself are a star with your unique qualities, your intellect, social skills, personality, midos, spirituality, contribution to family, personal growth. You're a star. You have a unique ability to bring light to this world. You're seeing yourself. This is your desire to have peace in the meadow and tranquility and contribution. You're seeing yourself. When you go to a beautiful place and you have a sense of self, this is who I am, it represents your best midah, you're in a zone which is beyond emotion. You're above emotion. You're in a place of pure consciousness where you're there and you're experiencing self, experiencing selfhood, experiencing identity, experiencing the godly neshama that God placed within you, the emotional self. And emotionally, how do you feel? Inspired. What else do you feel there, Rivka? Calm. Calm. Why are you calm? Because you are experiencing yourself. When you are yourself, you're calm. When you're yourself, you are inspired. So when you walk in to a room, and otherwise you'd be in your mind going, do they like me, do they not like me? Am I making a good impression? What are they thinking of me? What are they saying about me? Oh, they're whispering what? If you go to this place, and you become yourself, you get in the zone, what happens to the worry thoughts? They go away. Why do they go away? Because you're feeling calm. You feel calm because you're yourself. You're calm when you are yourself. It doesn't matter what anybody else says or what they say about you because you're here not to be liked. You're not in this world to be approved of by anybody. We are stuck in an emotional pain of self-approval. We get that from our upbringing, from our parents and siblings and competition, etc., and being in schools and social pressures. We are all trying to be approved of. Do they like me? Do they not like me? I want to be liked. Going to this place in your mind, breathe in, go to your place, go beyond self-approval. Go beyond the worry. Do they like me, not like me? Am I popular, not popular? Am I in the crowd, not the in crowd? Am I wearing the nicest clothes? Do I have the new, new designer stuff? Am I with it, am I cool? Am I liked? That's all because the swirling thoughts of emotion of pain, emotional pain of I want to be loved, I want to be liked, I want to be approved of, is all coming because we live on the plane of emotion where I want to be approved of. But if you go to this place, Above emotion, up here, feel emotionally safe and calm. Why? Because you're yourself. 
Who else wants to share with me where you are? What's your beautiful place? What's your name? Elisheva. Elisheva. Tell me where are you in your beautiful place? Field of flowers. Say again. Green glass. How do you feel in this place? In a meadow with green grass and a blue sky? How do you feel? Happy. Go a little deeper than that. You feel happy because this place reflects you. What does it say? What does this place of green grass and open meadow, open space say about your best attribute? This represents your best character trait. What is your best character trait? From the other class. From Monday's class on what is your best personality trait? Compassion. This represents compassion. The meadow, the warmth, the openness. What you're seeing, Elisheva, in the meadow and the green grass and the blue sky is yourself. You're intuiting, you're thinking about, you're expressing, you're feeling, you're experiencing your soul. Your soul is your best mida, your best attribute. This is your godliness. When you are experiencing compassion, you walk into a room and I say, I am compassion. Who am I? Compassion. Think of the meadow. Green grass, blue sky, that's who I am. And when you're in the room, and you might otherwise think, well, do they like me, not like me? Instead, if you go to your beautiful place, you go to this place of compassion, your true mida, true attribute. Breathe it in and express compassion. Instead of worrying what they're saying about you, say, hi, what are you doing? Oh, you look sad. Is that okay? Everything all right? Oh, can I get a drink for you? If you act like yourself, what happens to the worry whether they like you or not? Why does it go away? You're being yourself because you've elevated yourself, you've graduated from the realm of self-approval to the realm of making your contribution. When you are in the world of emotional turmoil, worry, concern, it's always about self-approval. Am I loved? By my parents, by my siblings, by my friends, by my neighbors, by my, who's gonna marry me? I need approval. I need to be loved. I need to be said, you're good. We're not here to be approved of. It's important to have appreciation, that's true. And we're supposed to get that natural love from our parents, but sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes parents are involved in other things and they don't give us that something called attachment. Has anyone heard of attachment? It's called the emotional attachment, emotional value, emotional time and attention. Parents are busy, parents are involved. Maybe a kid, another sibling has to have some issues, medical issues or emotional issues and they're busy. But me, I get left out. So what do I think? As a child, if I don't have emotional attachment growing up, I don't get that unconditional love from my parents. I grow up in a divorced home or an uh, arguing home. If I, if I don't feel attached, I don't feel loved, I don't feel valued, I'm going to walk out thinking about myself what? That I am? Can I hear you? I'm not good enough. That's you? Who said that? You? What's your name? Nechama. The source of low self-esteem is, I am not good enough. And if we carry that feeling of, I'm not good enough, within me, from my childhood, in my teen years, into my adulthood, into my marriage, to raising children, how is it going to affect my relationships if I feel I'm not good enough? Which is called low self-esteem. Coming from a lack of attachment in my childhood, because I wasn't approved of, which is understandable, because we all live that way. We all live by wanting approval. But if we realize what we're doing, if we realize that there's three parts to us, the physical, the emotional, and the neshama, the intellectual, and above it is a feeling of value that God says, you are valuable because you have a midah of God within you. And your midah, Elisheva, is compassion, and yours, Rivka, is chen, warmth. 
stars, compassion for each star in the world. And you live that value, you experience it, you think about it, you breathe it. Everyone breathe in and breathe in your vida. Breathe in. Here's an emotional state. We're in an emotional state now of emotional calm, emotional serenity, emotional connectedness with yourself, with your neshama, your soul. This is higher than the emotional need for approval. Now you're in a state of connectedness to God. You know it from our first workshop. You know what your midah is, whether it's Hashem Hashem consistency, kale, leadership, rachum, compassion, chanun, chaim, emotional connection, erech patience, rav chesed, giving, MS, honesty, no tzarechesed, creativity, no se'avon, forgiving, vinake, resilience. You know what it is, you know it. Now we've left the world of knowing and we're coming to the world of experiencing yourself. When you're experiencing oneness with yourself, you know who you are, breathe it, in this calm state, accessing your soul, which means accessing your subconscious self, your metaphysical mirror, which reflects God, your own godliness, when you know that you have godliness within you, you know you are worthy, you elevate yourself from the need to be approved. Now I don't need to be approved, I now enter the world of making my what? Contribution. Contribution. It's a whole different world. When you walk into a room and you say, I'm here to contribute, what do I have to contribute? Answer that question for me now. What do you have to contribute? Your best midah. You have to contribute your, over here, you have what to contribute. What is the contribution you can make? You walk into a room and say, I don't need to be approved of by these people here. I'm here to give to them. What am I giving them? My intellect, my social skills, my personality, my midos, my spirituality, my family background, my family contribution, and my pers personal growth. I'm here to give. I'm not here to receive. That's the meaning of ahava. Ahava. Ahava means what? Love. The two middle letters of the word ahava are hav. Hav means to give. When you give love, when you give of yourself, when you give your personality, you give your midos, that's called loving somebody. Not to receive love, but to give love. You're here to give love. That's called giving a contribution. Question. Uh, yeah, how, Malki, right? Yeah. So if you're, if you're calling to that place that you thought of, um, you envisioned it with another person there, how, what does that say differently like, about you? It's not you're a connector. If you're there with another person, that means that you are a connector. You are a people person. You are a friendly person. You love connection. You love... Chevreshaft, right? Schmoozing, talking, connecting. So that's part of the idea of chesed and chen. And what did we say on Monday about your best mida? Like which one it was? Yes, which one was our, uh, your best mida? Chan and empathy. So that was intellectually. We said that your mida, we figured it out over here, is your best attribute was empathy. And now emotionally, you went to this beautiful place and you went above your emotional self into your true self and you saw a meadow with someone else. You felt it. You felt it. You experienced Cain by being in a meadow with somebody else. So now you know it and now you knew it intellectually and now you experienced it. When you know it here and you feel it here, emotionally and beyond your emotions, now you're joining the mind and the heart. Now you have an alignment. Now all we have left is to do it. So Monday we're going to talk about doing it. You, you know it intellectually, you feel it emotionally, and your soul, and you go deeper than your emotions. Your emotions lead you to the higher place, which is your knowledge of self, your experience of self. Breathe it. You know it. Now Monday we'll talk about doing it. Now, now, lastly, here is our homework for today. Someone have a question? Yes, please. You know it intellectually. Go to your beautiful place. Like go through your mind to the blue garden, yellow garden, purple garden. 
field, wheat field, and then go to your best place. Your best place is you, your highest godly self. Experience it. Be in the zone. That's called being in the zone. You're in the zone. When you walk into a room, now give that. Don't walk, walk in and say, hmm, did I like me? Some people walk into a room, they go like this, they go, walk into a room, they go. Hi. Walk into a room like this. Hi, how are you? How are you doing? What's your name? Elisheva. Hi, I'm Elisheva, nice to meet you. And I want you to practice saying your name. This is how you say your name. What's your last name, Elisheva? You were showing me? Yeah. So a lot of people would say, you might otherwise say your name. Hi, my name is Elisha, you show me. Here's how you say your name. Hi, my name is Elisheva, you were showing me. Elisheva, pause, punch, right? You were showing me. If I would say my name, hi, my name is Yisrael Roll. Roll, 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 what, what? Hi, my name is Yisrael Roll. Oh, you throw a roll. Oh, I see. My name is Elisheva Yerushalmi. What's your last name, Rivka? Brzezanski. Brzezanski. If you said, hi, my name is Rivka Brzezanski. Rivka Brzezanski? What? What? My name is Rivka Brzezanski. I want you to say it. Rivka Brzezanski. Elisheva, you say it. Elisheva Beautiful. What's your name? Chaya. Chaya, well, you say your name. Say your name. Chaya Boyerski. No, slower. Chaya Boyerstein. If you would say Chaya Borastein, so Chaya Bora Steen? Oh, so it's Chaya Bora Steen. No. Chaya Chaya Borastein. Why? Because I believe in me. I have what to offer here. I'm coming into this room contributing my best mita. What's your name? Eliana Elazar. So you could say, my name is Eliana Lazar. Eliana Zar Or you could say Eliana Elazar. Let me hear you say that. Eliana, pause. Eliana, Elazar. Let me say it again. Eli Eliana, Good. So I, Eliana, El oh, Elazar. Oh, I know the Elazar family. Oh, Elazar. Okay. So Eliana, Elazar. It's more present. It's more here. It's more contributing than just worrying. Eliana, Elazar. Like, hi, I'm Yisrael Roll. I'm Yisrael Roll. Oh, nice to meet you. Oh, did you have a daughter? Yeah. Question. Elisheva, right? Yeah. What's your last name? Let me hear you say your name. Go on, let's see. Come on, let's go. You're too embarrassed because you're worried. What is embarrassment? I'm embarrassed because I'm worried what people are going to say about me. We are leaving the world of embarrassment. We are no longer going to be embarrassed about anything from today forward. I'm here to contribute. I'm not embarrassed about anything. Right? Elisheva, what's your name? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Come on. Elisheva. Yeah. Everyone do it for her. Let's see. One, two, three. Elisheva. Let's do it. Let's do it. The whole, whole sentence. Ready? The whole sentence. But say the name and then punch. Right? My name is Elisheva Cooper. Right. Now you have a question, Elisheva. Did I embarrass you? There's no such thing as embarrassment. Right? I'm not embarrassing you. I'm trying to teach you how to stand up for yourself and say, I'm here to present. I don't need anybody's approval. Right? The other flowers represent just calmness. So it's blue is infinity. Right? The blue of tachlis. The blue of tcheles, blue. The word tcheles, blue, represents the same word as tachlis, purpose. Infinity is purpose. It's Hashem's purpose. Your purpose is to give out your chain. That's why you're here. Hashem put you here to express His chain. When you're expressing God's chain, there's no worry. I'm here to do God's work. God placed me here to give my chain and give out His chain. You like me or don't like me. I don't care whether you like me or not. I'm, I'm expressing God's chain. It doesn't matter whether you like me or not. I'm doing what God wants me to do. One second. One second. Yes. Ruth, right? Go on. What do you feel? That's fine. So then go to a green meadow. Green represents 
Green represents growth. Green is, is, is grass, is the shayim, is a good foundation of growth. So you're a growing person, developing person. Why does purple give you anxiety? Purple gives you anxiety. Yeah. If purple gives you anxiety, let me just think, hold on. Let me just go into my soul state. All questions, all questions you have are answered here. Let me go to my soul state. Hold on one second. Everyone go to your soul state one second. Purple. Purple is a royal color, royal purple. And you are, you are um, concerned about your own regal nature. Am I royal enough? What is the essence of royalty, Ruth? Ruth? What is the essence of royalty? Yeah. What did we say at the beginning of our talk, this, uh, our mm -hmm. workshop? Oh. Who was royal? So if a person's worried about purple, mm -hmm. and they're worried about royalty, what is their antidote? To be like Avram and Sarah and to be? Baal Chesed. Not receiving. So when you have anxiety about a color or about something, then do your midah. Live your midah. All answers lie in here. Question. What's like sunsets? What's what? What are sunsets like represent? Sunsets represents the end of the day, mission. Morning represents chesed. Sunset represents obligation. Din. Avram was sunrise. Yitzchak was sunset. He, in this week's parsha, when he met Rivka, he was outside. Right? He was outside. La um, suach pasade. He was meditating at the evening. Right? He was davening mincha. So mincha sunset represents end of day, responsibility, gvura, strength, perseverance. That's what sunset represents. So it's a sense of mission, sense of responsibility to Hashem. The morning is chesed, openness, giving. And the end of the day, sunset represents, did I do my obligation? Was I responsible? Did I do justice today? That's the Vida of Gvura. Um, Very good question. What's your name? That's right. What's your what's your name? Avital Gozman. Desmond. Avital. Say the name again. Desmond. For a whole name. Avital Desmond. Okay. Very good. The question is. If people embarrass somebody else, and there's no such thing as embarrassment, then why does that person get a punishment for embarrassing someone in public? Right? The answer is, that's what they're doing to me. They're putting me down and they're embarrassing me in public. Internally, internally, I'm not embarrassed. If you go to your soul state, you can't embarrass me. You're embarrassing yourself if you want to make fun of me. That's what they're trying to do to me. They're trying to embarrass me by saying I'm this or that, right? So, but that's, that's putting someone else down. The reason why that's not good is because putting some, someone else down says, you're no good, I'm good. Rosh and Hara, the reason why Rosh and Hara is no good is because when I speak about somebody else, I'm saying, they're no, I'm good, but they're no good. Lush and Hara goes against the purpose of life. The purpose of life is to become a growing person, to prove myself. If I say, that person's no good, I'm saying, they're no, I'm good, but they're no good. So Lush and Hara or embarrassing somebody else, Lush and Hara or embarrassing somebody is saying, you're no good, I'm good. That goes contrary to the purpose of life, which is to be the best person you can be. So when they're doing that, they're going against the purpose of life. They are trying to <coughs> put me in a box, and in a square box, and say, I'm not liked. But my job is to go where? Soul state. Go to your soul state, your higher place. You can't embarrass me. You can try. And when someone hurts me, that's their problem. You hurt me? Yeah, that wasn't nice. You're trying to embarrass me, put me down, because you're trying to say that, oh, you're insecure because you want to put me down because you want to say, you're okay, but I'm not okay. You can do whatever you want, right? If I know what I'm doing, right, if I know my system of self-development, can't embarrass me. I can go over to the person and say, you know something, I want to tell you something. That was really hurtful what you said. 
but you're only hurting my external, right? Watch. If someone says, a, says something to me, they're shooting an arrow at me. Ow. Ow. It grazes off my shoulder. Until this workshop, the arrow would have gone where? Straight to your heart. Straight to my heart, because it goes to my emotions. I'm embarrassed. They hurt me. So I go, oh, you said that I am not a nice person. You said that I'm ugly. You say that I'm not a good dresser. Oh, you say that I'm not cool with it. Ooh, because what they're saying purports to define me. That person tried to define me by saying I'm no good. I don't meet their standards. One second. Now that I know who I am, I am a person in the meadow who is a giver, bal chesed. I am a compassionate, empathic, leadership, resilient, forgiving, helpful, truthful. I am those things, right? Now I have a self. The arrow comes and it goes here. Ow, it hurts. Not nice. But it grazes off my shoulder. It doesn't hit me here because now I have what? I have a mind where I know who I am. I have a sense of self, an emotional sense, and a soul, sta soul state. Now anything you say to me will graze off my shoulder. It hurts, but it doesn't go to my core because now I have my own core. It's my responsibility to develop my own core in my relationship with Hashem. So your homework is this. Whenever you get emotionally down, today, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Shabbos, Sunday, until I return on Monday in five days from now, emotionally down, and you feel ow, right? I want you to practice, want you, everyone draw a stick figure. Everyone draw a stick figure on your page. Draw a stick figure. At the top in the head, put your best attribute. At the heart, write down your usual sad, difficult emotion. Usually your go-to emotion is either anxious, worried, depressed, up and down. Put down your, emo your go-to emotion. When someone says something to me, and it hurts me here, I can either stay here and go down into gravity, draw an arrow from the heart down into the legs, and on that arrow write gravity. And if I feel hurt, it'll go into gravity, it'll make me feel what? What? Worse. Worse. What do I feel in my body when, I, when it goes from my heart down to my body? I feel brought down into gravity and it make makes me feel what? Heavy. Heavy. What else? Drained. Drained. Weak. Sad. Shaking. Upset. But now that we have this technique, of going up above emotions, I want you to go draw an arrow from here up to here. And on that arrow write anti-gravity. Now write an arrow called anti-gravity. Whenever you get hurt, and I guarantee you, you are gonna get hurt in the next five days. Someone's gonna say something or something's gonna happen which is gonna hurt you, it's gonna bother you. It's inevitable. It's gonna happen. In the next five days, something's gonna happen that's not gonna make you feel good, right? And you're gonna go, oh, and normally you would otherwise go down here into gravity and go, Oy. what's life all about? What's the point? I'm so depressed. I'm so sad. I'm confused. But now I want you to breathe. Now that we know the technique, breathe. Go to a beautiful place. It represents your highest self. Go up here. Anti-gravity. And I want you to draw a stick figure every day. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. Sunday, Monday, and show one time where you're able to go from down, oh, you know what? I don't have to go there. I can go anti-gravity. So this is called the anti-gravity group. I want you to see each other and say, are you part of the anti-gravity group? How's your anti-gravity going today? I want you to share thoughts on anti-gravity and write down in your notebook how you went from gravity to anti-gravity. Everyone sit down like this, sit like this. We'll end with this. Look, this. So look around the room. Look around the room. What, do you, what energy do you get in the room? Sad. Okay. Now everyone sit up with light. This is light point. Sit up like this. Like a ballerina. A ballerina does not stand like this. She doesn't sound like this. A ballerina stands like this. Watch. What's the difference between standing like this? Hi, how are you? Eli Shava. Chaya. Yisrael. Or like this. Shalom Aleichem, Yisrael, roll. Elisheva, Desmond. 
Alishama Cooper. Right? And you stand like this, you walk in and say, I've got what to contribute. You're now in your light point. I want you to sit up and look. What energy do you look around the room right now? What energy do you get in the room right now when you're sitting like this? Confident? Positive? When you're sitting like this, in your low self-esteem and your emotional pain, you're going, oh, and that's gravity. Your job next five days is anti-gravity. So I want to ask you, who's going to join the anti-gravity club this week? Okay, so you're joining the anti-gravity club. I want you to see you, God willing, on Monday. And we're all going to be floating in the atmosphere of anti-gravity. That's your question.